All right, so we're going to talk today about the uh, ultrasound exam of the shoulder. We're going to go through the full exam and give some tips and tricks on how to make sure that you identify pathology correctly and make sure you examine the entire rotator cuff in both the short and long axes. So uh, the way that I like to start is I'm on a sitting stool, the patient's on a sitting stool, and then we're both looking at the screen so both of us can see the pathology. And you want to have rotating stools with no backs because it allows you to have full access to the patient and it makes it a lot more comfortable. And then I also have a, a bone model here that I'm going to go through if you want to come closer, and, and show kind of some of the osseous landmarks that we're going to be looking at to start. So at <clears throat> the beginning of the exam, I have the patient sit there facing the screen, and then I have them bend their elbow to 90 degrees and then the arm at about neutral rotation. And then I tell them we're going to have them rotate out and then come back in slowly. And since we're in Texas, we say we're going to have you grab your gun and they get that position right there. Okay. And that's the modified crash position to look at the supraspinatus. So we start off right here like this. All right. So you grab your ultrasound probe and most of these ultrasound probes, if you look at them, there's always going to be a little nub on one side and that nub is going to be associated with the dot on that screen. So for me, I always like to have, the screen the same as their pathology. So the left side of the screen to me is gonna be medial. Um, you can do it whatever way you want, but that's just the way that my mind associates it. And so if you come look closely, the first thing you wanna do is go find their biceps tendon, okay? And the biceps tendon is gonna be right off the anterolateral edge of the acromion. So I, I feel the anterolateral edge of her acromion is right here. So I can almost do it without looking at the screen at all. If I come in right here, and it's about, I would say maybe four centimeters distal to the anterolateral edge of the acromion is gonna be the part of the groove where you're gonna find the biceps. We go right there and boom. <clears throat> we see the biceps tendon right in the middle of the screen, right here. Okay, there, that's that dot. So this is lesser tuberosity, this is greater tuberosity. Okay, and then we're gonna have Shanda slowly rotate her arm out that way. Okay, then we see subscap. She's gonna rotate back in. All right, so just talking a little bit about the biceps. Anisotropy is what we alluded to in the slides. And anisotropy is, <clears throat> if you see this tendon is white right now, if I toggle this up or down, I'm not, the ultrasound waves aren't hitting the tendon perpendicular, so it becomes hypoechoic, and that's, that's a false negative. So you have to kind of play with the toggling of the probe to get that, that tendon white to make sure that you're in the right plane. And then if you probe down the biceps tendon right there, you see, Shannon's got a little bit of fluid around her biceps. Um, just a little bit, not too bad. But And then there's you're getting into the muscular tendinous junction. And then right here, as you see coming across here, go a little deeper. Right here, this is a pectoralis major tendon right here coming across the muscular tendinous junction of the biceps. Okay, and if you see here, she, she actually has a small amount of fluid. I mean, we'll... And then we can zoom in on this machine. Right here. Just a tiny bit of fluid, maybe a little tendon nose, so she works out pretty hard. And this right here is the transverse humeral ligament right there. Okay, so the next step we have, we have the patient externally rotate, and this right here we see in profile the subscapularis tendon inserting into the, the lesser tuberosity here. Then we probe up, and if you look right here, <clears throat> this is the upper cable of the subscapularis right there. Okay, and then if we go medial right here, this is the coracoid right there. So if you see them internally, externally rotate, there's the subscapularis. Oh, let me see here. This is the subscapularis right here going underneath the coracoid right there. Nice and smooth. Okay. And if you look at the bone model, where we're at right here on the humerus is right here in this area here. All right. So after we've looked at the biceps tendon and the subscap in that plane, the next thing you do is you flip the probe 90 degrees. Okay. <clears throat> and then if you're then you're going to look at the biceps tendon and the long axis. And the way I tell everyone to find the biceps tendon and the long axis, if you scroll back and forth, I tell there's two mountains. This is actually the greater tuberosity. This is the leading edge of the supraspinatus. And I go medial, long head biceps. And then medial here is the lesser tuberosity. So if you go back and forth, you see there's, I say there's two mountains. And in between the mountain is always going to be the biceps tendon, right? So we look at our biceps tendon and the long axis right here. And as we come down distal, Get it in plane right there, looks fine. And then as we move medial, here's the lesser tuberosity. Just medial to this is gonna be the subscap muscle. Let me increase our gain slightly so we can see. And this is the subscap muscle belly right here, looking at it on the short axis, okay? So obviously no tears, all right? So 
that's a great way to find it. And this is how I actually inject my biceps tendon. I come here like this, and then the needle comes down like that. And then you can actually just move just, just lateral with your probe right there. And you see, this is the leading edge of the supraspinatus there, but that's not the plane that we typically look at it. So <clears throat> just looking at the bone model, where we're at is right here in space. We're going back and forth between these two areas. And so like a, the easiest way to do this, to learn this, is to find the bones first, and then you can find the soft tissues. So we're gonna come back this way. And the key to this position is not so much the extension of the arm, but the adduction of the elbow, because that actually pulls the, uh, the lesser tuberosity out from underneath the acromion. And if you're looking at the patient, when they're turned this way, if you look at their shoulder and find the most anterior aspect of their shoulder, looking at right here, this point, that's almost always going to be your supersonatus. Okay, so we put right there, so we've got our supersonatus in profile. Okay, and then the, the angle of the probe is going to be towards the, since we're doing a right shoulder, it's going to be angled from the, the left shoulder to the right hip. That's the angle of the probe. So most anterior aspect of the shoulder, contralateral shoulder angle to the, to the ipsilateral hip and you almost get it perfect every time finding the supersonatus, okay? So this right here is supersonatus tendon, okay? And you wanna make sure that you probe anterior all the way till you get to the biceps tendon coming across the humeral head. All right, that way you know you've got the entire supersonatus. So that right there is the supersonatus tendon. Okay, this is subacromial bursa, this is deltoid. Then as we probe back, 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 we're getting into the infrasonatus here, okay? And then the next part is you come back to the biceps and then you flip your probe 90 degrees. Okay, and then you're looking at, right now we see here's the long head of the biceps right here. And this right here is the rotator cuff in profile on the short axis. And then I just bring my probe back slowly, back, back, back. This is infrasonatus and we'll get almost all the way back to Terry's back here. But when you do this, you wanna make sure you always see that biceps tendon here. It's always gonna be on the bottom of the screen. As you probe out lateral, that's getting lateral to the cuff, and then as I come medial, I'm getting right into the rotator cuff, looking at it on the short axis. And if someone has a tear, you'll see a dip down in the tendon here, you'll see a, a hole. And so another thing I want to show is <clears throat> from this position here, this is anisotropy is, is sometimes if you have your probe misaligned, you'll see how that becomes dark. That's, that's a false negative. And so the way that you want to do that is toggling the probe up and down and you'll get that, you'll get those waves to go perpendicular to those collagen fibers. And it's, it's difficult sometimes with the rotator cuff because it's not, it's, it's a three dimensional structure coming in at a lot of different angles. So you have to make sure that you're, you're always taking that into account. And as, as you come back on the shoulder, you have to angle the probe to be in line with the humeral head because you're, you're not probing a flat structure. You're, you're probing a globe. You're probing a, the sphere of the humerus. And so make sure to account for that. And the other thing too is I like to turn my hand a little bit to make sure that I like to see the rotator cuff flat across the screen. All right, so here we go. There's infrasonatus going right back there. All right, so no tears at all. And if you look on the humerus, this is what we're doing here. And then you have to kind of angle your hand as you come off the backside, okay? And then the last part of examining the rotator cuff, is coming up to the back. Okay, we're going to look at the infrasonatus and the teres minor and the long axis. <clears throat> so the way to do this, you're going to feel the postlateral edge of the acromion, and you're just going to pop the probe right there. This right here is the uh, infrasonatus, and you can have the patient. Oh, let me get this better. A little bit deeper. Internally, externally rotate. Okay. All right, and you see the tendon moving with the humeral head right there, and as we go medial. This right here is the glenoid labrum. Go ahead and internally rotate there. You can see here's the labrum. Here's the cuff rotating with the humeral head right there like that. All right, and then as we go just a little bit more inferior, that's the teres minor right there. All right, if someone has a massive tear, what I like to do actually is look at these in the short axis, okay? And the short axis, you find that by turning the probe 90 degrees and coming proximal here. This right here is actually scapular spine, and this is gonna be infra infraspinatus muscle belly, and that right there is gonna be teres minor muscle belly, and if you look, these muscles look very similar to her overlying trapezius. Um, we can actually see her posterior humeral circumflex artery being right there, but, and, and so the muscle architecture is gonna be the same. When someone has a big tear, this muscle is gonna be very hyper, hyper because it's gonna be fatty infiltrated. There's gonna be less water in the muscle, 
Same thing, you know, rarely you'll see the teres minor ter torn, but you do see it occasionally. But a lot of things, what you can do is compare this muscle belly to that muscle belly, and it'll give you a very nice, you know, comparison, just like you get on that MRI when you're looking at the, the deep sagittal plane MRI to look at how bad is your atrophy, and, and you're comparing it to the other tendons. You can also do that at the, for the supersunatus, if you come right here, okay, so if you look, this right here posteriorly is your scapular spine, and then anteriorly out here is going to be the clavicle, and this is the, the short axis of her subscap or supersunatus muscle belly, and you can see the overlying trapezius, the muscle architecture is the same. This will be much more hyperechoic because it'll be less water, more fatty infiltration if they have a big tear and it's retracted. And then you can also do the same thing for the long axis of the supersunatus comparing it to the, the trapezius if you're looking medially on the body. Um, so that's pretty much the shoulder exam right there. Um, I think that uh, as long as you identify the bony anatomy first, you continue to work on it over and over again, you're going to get good at this pretty quick and uh, I think you'll enjoy it and I think your patients will appreciate it.